वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विथ आवर नेक्स्ट न्यू टॉपिक ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग साइंस दैट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड हाई वेटेस्ट टॉपिक वी आर हैविंग द मेटल फॉर्मिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ मेटल फॉर्मिंग द बेसिक्स ऑफ मेटल लेट एस स्टार्ट विद द सिंपल डेफिनेशन ऑफ मेटल फॉर्मिंग वॉट इज मेटल फॉर्मिंग सो सी मेटल फॉर्मिंग इज द प्रोसेस इन विच द साइज द शेप ऑफ द कॉम्पोनेंट इट ऑप्टेंड बाय इज ऑप्टेंड बाय the plastic deformation into the material see the size shape of the material to be uh, formed is getting by the plastic deformation here the word plastic deformation is very very important that is deforming the material we are getting the required shape and size of the product this is the forming process so here if you look at the the stresses induced in the material so definitely here we are deforming the material so deformation when it is possible when we are deforming or applying the stresses beyond the yield strength of the material but definitely below the below the ultimate strength of the material so between this region only if we apply the stresses material undergoing the deformation it will change its shape and size to get the required product so definitely the induced stresses the stresses which are getting induced in this forming are greater than the yield strength suppose this is the yield strength of the material sigma y these are greater than the sigma y induced stress greater than the yield strength of the material but which is again less than the ultimate uh, stress or ultimate strength of the material so between this region between this region the deformation changing the size changing the shape of the component is allowed which is our plastic deformation zone basically so in this zone we want more and more deformation to have the change in the size and shape of the product so this is the <coughs> plastic deformation or this is simple metal forming now if you look at the casting process just now we have seen the metal casting so what is the basic difference in the casting and forming so see if we see the casted component the casted component having the uh, properties at a point in all the direction are same that is the casted component shows the isotropy that is it, the product or the components which are made by the casting these are isotropic in nature at a point in all direction properties are same for the casted material whereas by using this metal forming we can able to have the anisotropic material that is at a point in different directions we can able to produce the different properties also so generally Uh, if you see the forging operation the we can have the different properties at different direction we can have the different grain orientation also in different directions it is possible in case of the metal form now again if see we see the second one of the difference between the other manufacturing processes and this metal forming is that if you look at the wastage of the material see in casting also we have seen lot of material get waste in the form of the uh, in uh, getting system uh, risers runners okay so that's why we are using the term casting yield is there in same fashion if you look at the cutting operations that we are going to see definitely where there is a loss of material in the form of chips isn't it so major this is the major application or major advantage of the metal forming process is that in metal forming process the wastage of material is very less 
प्लीज रिमेम्बर द वेस्टेज ऑफ द मटेरियल इज वेरी लेस इन केस ऑफ मेटल फॉर्मिंग प्रोसेस सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एडवांटेज ऑफ द मेटल फॉर्मिंग प्रोसेस नाउ सी जनरली द मटेरियल्स और द शेप्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोड्यूस बाय द मेटल फॉर्मिंग प्रोसेस आर यूनिफॉर्म आर यूनिफॉर्म बट अप टू सर्टन एक्सटेंट we can produce we can manufacture the non uniform shapes by using the forging operation this is one of the limitation of metal forming what we can produce the maximum we can produce the uniform shapes but up to certain extent if we uh, talk about the non uniformity in the shape then we can use the forging operation and by using the forging process we can able to do that this is one limitation second important thing is that see as here material is going to deform plastically we are going to produce the permanent deformation into the material so definitely to have that deformation we require the huge amount of loads to induce that much stress to flow the material in the plastic region very easily deform the material very easily we need the huge amount of energy power and of course when we need this huge amount of energy and power we need the huge amount of forces isn't it so we need the huge or tremendous amount of amount of forces or the power or energy for this metal forming process please remember to get this deformation so uh, you can say this is the introductory part about this uh, metal forming please try to note what uh, discussion that we have about this some uh, advantages of this metal forming what are kinds of the stresses induced in the metal forming what are some limitations of the metal forming now this metal forming is basically get divided into two categories ये जो मेटल फॉर्मिंग की प्रोसेस है दो कैटेगरीज में क्लासीफाई होती है डिवाइड होती है दो प्रोसेस है इसके अंदर वन इज नोन एज सो मेटल फॉर्मिंग कैन बी गेट क्लासीफाइड इन टू टू कैटेगरीज वन इज कोल्ड वर्किंग एंड द अनदर इज हॉट वर्किंग so definitely we are going to see this cold working and hot working so if you look at the definitions very very simple definition about this cold working and hot working see if the material is deformed or worked below its recrystallization temperature it is known as cold working cold working operation and when the material is deformed above its recrystallization temperature it is known as the hot working operation or process so here the material is deformed below its below its recrystallization recrystallization temperature in bracket i will write recrystallization temperature i will write it as rct then it is cold working and here if the material is deformed or worked above its above its recrystallization temperature rct recrystallization temperature it is known as the hot working operation or process so very important please remember cold working kya hai hot working kya hai now here temperature kaun sa temperature recrystallization temperature so let us understand first what is this recrystallization and then we understood what is this recrystallization temperature so let us understand this recrystallization so what is this recrystallization so this is the process in which this is the process in which the old the old comma distorted 
old comma distorted grains are replaced by are replaced by new comma equiaxed equiaxed comma strain free strain free and stress free grains okay by the strain free and stress free grains of course with the nucleation and growth definitely is known as the recrystallization process is known as the recrystallization process okay so please remember that very important the recrystallization can only be possible when the degree of cold work is sufficient and temperature is quite huge so when this recrystallization is possible when the degree of cold work degree of cold work is sufficient and the temperature is quite high or huge then and then only this recrystallization is possible so before going in detail about this cold uh, degree of cold work let us understand ye recrystallization kya hai yahan pe jo purane wale बेंड हुए डिस्टॉर्ट हुए बिकॉज ऑफ वर्किंग ये क्यों बेंड हुए क्यों डिस्टॉर्ट हुए क्योंकि हमने उसके ऊपर वर्किंग किया इसकी वजह से जो ग्रेन्स है मटेरियल के वो बेंड हो गए डिस्टॉर्ट हो गए पुराने हो गए सो ये सब जो ग्रेन्स है नाउ गेट रिप्लेस्ड बाय दी स्ट्रेन फ्री स्ट्रेस फ्री इक्वी एक्ट न्यू ग्रेन्स इट इज नोन एज द रिक्रिस्टलाइजन प्रोसेस This is the recrystallization. Now, ये कब possible है जब degree of cold work is sufficiently or sufficient and temperature is quite high. What is mean by this degree of cold work? So, dear students, please remember. So, degree of cold work. Degree of cold work. so it is nothing but see it is nothing but percentage reduction in area percentage reduction in area in case of in case of the processes like extrusion is there wire drawing is there forging is there okay where how can we write this percentage reduction degree of cold work we can write original area minus final area divided by original area into 100 this will be in percent so this is nothing but percentage reduction in area in case of the processes like extrusion forging wire drawing where generally the circular cross sections are there suppose if i talk about the rolling operation then how to write here for degree of cold work for rolling so rolling mein kya hota hai initial jo plate ki jo strip ki thickness wo kya hoti hai through this uh, rotating rollers it goes on decreasing because of the deformation so if ho is the original thickness of the plate and hf is the final thickness of plate or strip or slab then i can write this degree of cold work in case of the rolling process it can be h original minus h final divided by h original into 100 it is in percent like that i can define the degree of cold work in case of the rolling operation so this is the degree of cold work so sufficient degree of cold work hogi tabhi kya hoga recrystallization 
प्रोसेस वहाँ पे होगी जहाँ पे पुराने वाले ग्रेन्स पुराने वाले बेंड ग्रेन्स डिस्टॉर्टेड ग्रेन्स विल बी गेट रिप्लेस बाय न्यू ग्रेन्स ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन नाउ व्हाट इज द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर व्हाट इज द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट हमने अगर रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन देखा सो व्हाट इज रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो इट इज द टेम्परेचर इट इज द टेम्परेचर एट विच द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ न्यू क्रिस्टल द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ न्यू क्रिस्टल्स गेट कंप्लीटेड गेट कंप्लीटेड बाय द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ वॉट किसकी वजह से हो रहा है ये सब टेम्परेचर दैट इज बाय एप्लीकेशन ऑफ हीट एंड टेम्पर हीट एंड फोर्स इज रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर दिस इज एंड इट the temperature at which the formation of new crystal has been get completed it is a recrystallization temperature ki jo kya hota hai generally this recrystallization temperature generally one third to half of melting point temperature of the material to the absolute scale temperature at the absolute scale so recrystallization temperature kya hai it is half of if you look at the simple way the formula for the recrystallization temperature is half one third to half of the melting point of that material so this is the recrystallization temperature this is the definition for recrystallization temperature this is generally for various materials what are the range of temperature how to get that range of temperature generally it is half to or one third to half of melting point of that material for example for example let us see i will write here the material here the melting point temperature of this material and here we will have the recrystallization temperature of course i am going to write in degree centigrade degree centigrade okay so let us start with lead tin zinc cadmium okay then we are having our aluminium magnesium silver gold copper okay our iron then we are having nickel and say i last will take the tungsten so tell me what are the melting point temperatures of these materials so see lead and tin the temperature of melting point temperature of lead is how much 327 degree centigrade tin 231.2 that is 232 zinc 420 cadmium 321 aluminum 660 magnesium 650 silver 960 silver 960 gold 1063 copper 1083 iron take about uh, 135949 around 1400 i will take 1539 actually for iron 1539 i will write 1539 1400 for steel nickel 1455 degree centigrade and tungsten take it about 3300 degree centigrade now if you look at this materials so their melting point of temperature are these so what are their values for the recrystallization temperature so see here generally the recrystallization temperature for this lead and tin is below below room temperature kitna hai re generally minus 4 degree centigrade ye jo temperature hai ye recrystallization temperature of lead and tin what is meaning of this 
मतलब अगर लीड टीन इवन जिंक एंड कैडमियम को मैंने रूम टेम्परेचर पे भी उसके ऊपर काम करना चालू किया देन इट विल बी ट्रीटेड एज हॉट वर्किंग इज एंड इट सो सी देर रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर इज बिलो रूम टेम्परेचर जिंक एंड कैडमियम दे आर हैविंग द रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर दैट इज अवर रूम टेम्परेचर इज एंड इट इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एल्यूमिनियम इट इज वन फिफ्टी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड मैग्नेशियम मैग्नेशियम 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड सिल्वर 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड गोल्ड 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड कॉपर ऑल्सो 200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द आयरन इट इज 450 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड निकेल इट इज 600 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड टंगस्टन अराउंड 1200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड सी रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन टेम्परेचर ऑफ टंगस्टन इज 1200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड 1200 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड इसका मीनिंग क्या है इवन मैंने 1100 डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड पे भी अगर टंगस्टन के ऊपर काम किया देन इट इज स्टिल ट्रीटेड एज द कोल्ड वर्किंग और अगर लीड इन जिंक कैडमियम के बारे में अगर मैंने रूम टेम्परेचर भी उसको काम किया देन इट इज ट्रीटेड एज the hot working that is the thing you should keep in mind the special cases late thing zinc cadmium and this tungsten and all okay so these are the recrystallization temperatures for some materials you should keep it in mind